everybody and welcome to another video. Today I'd like to show you what the imagery looks like from the Sentera AGX710. Also I'd like to explain what the data actually means and how it is used. So let's get into it. Here is an example of a block of land I map using the Sentera AGX710. The reason why I chose this spot is because it has a varying degree of vegetation and drainage contours. As I stated in previous videos, the AGX710 captures three sets of data at once. Near Infrared, Red and Red Edge. So what is Near Infrared? Near Infrared is abbreviated as NIR and is part of the invisible electromagnetic light spectrum naturally produced by the sun. A healthy plant will reflect most of NIR light and this is a biological safety mechanism in just about every plant species. NIR is particularly damaging to the plant cells responsible for photosynthesis. Inversely, an unhealthy plant will reflect little to no NIR. And this normally means that photosynthesis is either very poor or non-existent. The level of reflectance is detected by the camera sensor. This photo you can see here is an original NIR photo from the MAP mission. As you can see, healthy plants are represented as light grey. Stressed plants are dark brown. And highly stressed, dead or non-existent is a light tan colour. NIR reflectance imagery is very useful to determine plant health and density. So what is red light spectrum? Just like NIR, it is part of the invisible electromagnetic light spectrum and is also naturally produced by the sun. But its effect on plants is completely opposite. The red light spectrum is essential for photosynthesis. Healthy plants will readily absorb it for food and energy production. An unhealthy plant's capacity to absorb red is greatly reduced as the plant is damaged in some way. The camera sensor picks up the level of reflectance from the red light spectrum. The red and NIR reflectance values are used to calculate the NDVI plant index. And the result is an intuitive colour map showing red, which means highly stressed or dead plants, yellow as stressed, and green healthy. The values are represented from plus 1 to minus 1. And as you can see, how much area the individual indices cover. NDVI is exceptionally good for determining overall plant health and gives a great overview of the drainage situation. Alrighty then, what about red edge? Red edge sits in between NIR and the red wavelength. Its level of reflectance is dependent on the amount of chlorophyll in the plant. And as you may know, chlorophyll is a very important chemical in the photosynthesis process. Red edge is less prone to oversaturation compared to red, which means in some cases the reflectance intensity blows out the imagery and makes it harder for the camera to pick up the finer detail, just like a normal colour camera can do if you overexpose the photo. Because red edge is dependent on the chlorophyll amount, the reflectance is less intense allowing the camera to pick up the finer detail. The red edge imagery values are used with the NIR imagery values, then the index NDRE is created. NDRE gives a more defined image and is more specific, whereas NDVI provides a better general overall image. So they basically cancel each other's weaknesses out. This is why I got the NDVI and NDRE version of the AGX710 sensor. It's a very versatile configuration with the best of both worlds. Now that's about all I have to say about plant mapping. The software I use to process the imagery is Sentera Field Agent. For the money, it is a very powerful program, especially if you're just doing plant mapping. I can create two-dimensional ortho mosaics, and the ortho mosaics aren't only limited to multi-spectral cameras. I created a true colour map with the images from my Zenmuse X5S camera. This provides a true colour comparison with the multi-spectral imagery. The other thing I like about Field Agent 
you can set it up to sync the imagery periodically with Centera's cloud network. This allows me remote access on any mobile device, which is brilliant for viewing generated ortho mosaic maps and captured imagery. The software can do a range of other things as seen in this video, and I highly recommend it. Now that's about all I can think of. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, comment below. And if you like this video, give me a like. Subscribe if you want to. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.